This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. For all the best Photoshop and Lightroom tips, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to facebook.com slash tipsquirrel. Hello everybody, Mike Hoffman here with a quick tip for you today on renaming photos within Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. Now I'm using Lightroom 5, but this same process will work for Lightroom 4 and Lightroom 3 and possibly even Lightroom 2. There are a number of places within our workflow where we can rename images, and one of them is right here in the library module. To rename an image here, we can simply choose Library and then Rename Photo, or press F2, and we'll get the Renaming dialog box. Now there are a number of templates we can choose from here to rename our file, or we can edit and create a new template. I'm going to cancel out of here and show you that you can also rename files when you export your images. Here within the export dialog box, there's a section for file renaming. And again, we see a template chooser with an edit button that will allow us to create our own templates. I'm going to cancel out of here and go into the import dialog box because here's where we find another opportunity to rename our files and perhaps one of the best places in the workflow as we're bringing our images in. And here on the right hand side where we choose to handle our files we have a file renaming section and we can enable this by simply clicking here in the checkbox next to rename files and now this section becomes active. Starting at the bottom we have the ability to change our file extension from uppercase to lowercase or leaving it as is with the original file. So I prefer mine with lowercase, so I'm going to choose that. And now we can choose the file renaming template that we want to use. And there are a number of built-in templates. Some of them have a custom name. For example, we'll just choose custom name and here we can actually type the name in. Now this may not be useful if we've got multiple photos, so we may want to choose something like custom name dash sequence. And now we have a number that's going to increment for each image that we import. So for example, if we took a bunch of photos at Disney, we could type Disney in here, and the starting number could be one, and they would be numbered Disney one, Disney two, and so forth as we import the files. Now we're not stuck with this number one. This is an editable field as well. We could start with any number here. We could start with 10. We could start with 27. It doesn't matter. We can choose any number we want as the starting number. So this is configurable as well. Now there's another option here, and this is the shoot name followed by a sequence number. Shoot name enables a second text entry dialog box here. And for example, if this was the Jones shoot, we could type that in right here. And again, we have a sequence number just as before. So we have two different types of text that we can work with here with our file name templates. Now where this really gets powerful is when we click here on the template name and choose edit, because now we can configure a file renaming template that's limited only by our imagination. So with this dialog box active, we can click here and we can just back up and clear the whole thing out. Now if we type text in, for example, I could put my initials and the text is copied verbatim into the file name. But now we can include any of these built-in presets as placeholders and they'll be filled in as the images are imported and renamed. So for example, if we wanted to have the date, here we have a bunch of date formats. And we'll choose year followed by month followed by date with a four digit year, a two digit month, and a two digit date. And we can click insert. And now that's appended here into the file name. So we get a file name that looks like my initials with a dash and then the date. Now that may not be enough because I may have taken a number of photos on that date. So we could also add, let's say, the hours 
and the minutes and the seconds. And now we've got a tremendous amount of information here in this file name. Now it gets a little cumbersome with all these numbers, so maybe we want to go right here in the middle and put a hyphen to separate them out. And we can do that, and the hyphen is translated literally. Now even that may not be enough, so perhaps we need a sequence number after that. So we can simply add a sequence number, and we can choose a single digit, a double digit, three digits, four, or five digits. We'll choose three digits. And so now we have my initials, literal text, followed by the date, followed by the hour, minutes, and seconds, and a three-digit sequence number that will separate any images that may have the same date and time. If we've got this set up, we can go ahead and click here, and we can choose to save this as a preset. And we can call this whatever we want, but let's be descriptive, and we'll call it the same as what we actually have here, which is year, month, date, hour, minute, second, sequence number. And we'll click Create, and now this becomes a preset in our list. Now there are a number of other fields that we can add in here into the file name as it's renamed. We've already looked at custom text, and we've looked at shoot name, and we can insert these anywhere we want. There are a variety of numbering options as well. We have import number, we have image number, we have sequence number, and we have total. Now what's the difference between import number, image number, sequence number, and total? Well, I've created a graphic to show you what these mean. Let's assume that we have a memory card in our camera and we shoot 10 images. We'll import those into Lightroom and the value for the import parameter will be one because this is the first import. The images will be numbered sequentially one through 10 and the sequence numbers will be one through 10. Since there are 10 total images in this import, the total will be the same number 10 for all the photos in that import. But now we take our card out and we go and shoot 10 more images and then we import them again. Now at this point the import number becomes 2 because this is the second import. The image number continues to grow sequentially so it increases from 11 through 20 in this import. But the sequence is reset started at 1 and it becomes 1 through 10 for this import. And since there are 10 images being imported, we have image 1 of 10, 2 of 10, 3 of 10, and so forth for this import. Now we go off and shoot 10 more images, and this becomes our third import when we bring it into Lightroom. So the value of import becomes 3. The image number continues to increment, starting with 21, right where we left off in the previous import, and increasing through 30. But again, the sequence number is reset back to 1, and the total number is 10, which is how many images are in this import. So hopefully this graphic will give you a guide to understanding the difference between the import number, the image number, the sequence number, and the total. So there you have a variety of options for inserting dynamic text into your file names as you're renaming them within Lightroom. You can save these settings as presets and use them at any time, whether it be on the import side, renaming your files in the library module, or on the export side. You have similar abilities throughout Lightroom. So use these settings to rename your files intelligently and save them as presets to make your workflow more efficient. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of information there related to photography, Photoshop, and Lightroom. You can follow me on Twitter at mhoffman2001, and you can find me on Google Plus by going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial.